Hello, I'm Lila Taylor, and I'm the Chief Business Officer of Demi Colton here at the Biotech Showcase, and I have the honor of interviewing Dr. David Corral, the Interim CEO of Human Longevity and Chief of Radiology. Thank you for joining us. Uh, most welcome. A few questions if I can start with. Just please give us an overview of what your company does. So, uh, you know, historically we were uh, formed as a uh, biotech uh, genomics company, but we've really transitioned into a artificial intelligence gen genomics company. And really the start of the company had its genesis in the year 2000 when the first human genome was sequenced. Uh, one of our co-founders is Craig Venter, who, who of course had a uh, hand in sequencing the first human genome. And really the purpose of the company uh, at the time of its foundation, which was four and a half years ago, is to really um, harness the untapped power of the human genome for N of one personalized care. Uh, and as the company evolved, uh, we actually got more uh, involved and in interest in uh, deep quantitative phenotyping uh, as a way of better understanding our genome. Uh, so long story short, uh, as we were uh, seeking to uh, explore better ways to um, uh, tap the unharnessed power of the whole genome, we set up a really a data gathering lab uh, in the first floor of our corporate headquarters, became the health nucleus. And the whole idea of that lab was to really recruit healthy individuals uh, to come see us and get evaluated by every imaginable genotypic and phenotypic test. So that was whole body MRI. CT calcium scoring, 4D echo, whole genome sequencing. And the goal was really to understand the normal human variation in phenotype as a better way of understanding genotype. And what we discovered was that after looking at 50 of these healthy individuals, uh, that many of them weren't so healthy after all. Uh, in fact, 40% of them had clinically significant disease. 14% had clinically significant actionable disease like a new tumor, new aneurysm, new rare uh, monogenic uh, mutation on whole genome sequencing. And so we transformed uh, that initial data gathering lab into what we now call the health nucleus, which is really essentially a precision health space uh, where our clients undergo a data-driven uh, data uh, precision health uh, assessment. That's fantastic. I personally have experienced Health Nucleus and am a great fan. Can you tell us what's next for Health Nucleus and human longevity? Great. Uh, so, you know, we've been pretty successful in San Diego. In fact, we're uh, uh, publishing a paper on the first 1,200 clients that uh, went through the Health Nucleus. Uh, and it's a pretty groundbreaking paper, we feel. Uh, it reads kind of like an indictment of the current healthcare system. Uh, essentially, we show that one in four of our clients, 25%, have a rare genetic mutation on whole genome sequencing. Uh, and here's the crazy thing, 63% of the time, uh, that genomic finding is correlated with phenotype. So, for example, we find a BRCA mutation uh, and in a male, and we find on prostate MRI that that individual has prostate cancer. Uh, or we find an LMNA uh, gene that encodes for cardiomyopathy, uh, and we find on cardiac MRI that uh, there's left ventricular hypertrophy. Uh, so we know that we're making really meaningful findings uh, as we're understanding individuals' uh, whole genome sequencing. So that has been successful. Uh, the publication, I think, will uh, result in a big splash. Uh, but what we're trying to do at this point is scale and democratize what we're doing in San Diego. Uh, so taking uh, what we're doing and uh, essentially offering this data-driven precision health platform uh, in multiple geographies, domestically at first, internationally uh, to follow. Uh, we have a new uh, collaboration in Naples, Florida. It's our first outside of San Diego uh, Health Nucleus Partnership. Uh, and the goal there is to work with, in, in these disparate geographies, work with hospital systems, academic medical centers, uh, and many times uh, concierge physicians, uh, enable uh, those practices with pharmacogenomics, whole genome sequencing data, integrated multimodal analytics, uh, and in that way scale and democratize what we're doing. It's fantastic. I can't wait until you come to uh, the Bay Area in San Francisco. Coming soon. So I know that you have been at many events over this week. Can you tell us what you are here for in this very important week in San Francisco, which includes the Biotech Showcase and the Digital Medicine and MedTech Showcase? Yeah, it's a great question. We, you know, I think um, from the foundation of the company, again, as we sort of evolved into an artificial intelligence genomics company, uh, we've been really enthusiastic uh, about the progress that's been made over the last four years, but also, uh, I would say, sort of unpleasantly surprised uh, at the lack of clinical uh, implementation. So everyone's talking about AI. AI is going to change medicine. It's going to be the next force behind extension of the healthy human lifespan. But really, very few groups are reducing that to clinical practice. 
Uh, and so it is interesting to start to see some folks uh, uh, developing algorithms and companies uh, founded around the idea of reducing AI into clinical practice. It's definitely something we've been doing now for the last couple years. Uh, we have an Alzheimer's integrated multimodal diagnostic that takes uh, quantitative imaging data, uh, takes uh, whole genome sequencing data, including common variants, integrates that with modifiable risk factors, blood biomarkers, and gives our clients a readout on their risk for, in this case, Alzheimer's disease. Not just relative risk or not just population level risk, but in the next year, uh, my risk of transitioning into mild cognitive impairment is X. And if I have elevated risk, what's the number one lever I can uh, pull to mitigate that risk? So. Uh, we're super excited that uh, there's more and more folks getting into this space, but we have a, a long way to go. Uh, as I'm fond of saying, you know, we've disrupted transportation, we've disrupted housing, we've disrupted retail. Uh, healthcare is going to be the next disruption, and we think AI is going to uh, be an important part of that. I can't wait. It's long overdue. Agreed. The only other question I was going to ask you about, now we discussed some of the challenges, but can you discuss perhaps some of those that you've overcome and partnerships that have helped you do that? Yeah, I, um, you know, in a way, I think one of the biggest challenges really has been kind of working within the uh, framework of the current healthcare system. Uh, and uh, really as a result of that, we've kind of went direct to consumer uh, or direct to patient. Uh, and so the clients that we have seen in the health nucleus uh, really have been cash pay. Uh, but we imagine that the next couple of years, uh, as we submit some of our multimodal machine learning based diagnostics for uh, FDA approval and eventually third party re uh, reimbursement, that some or all of what we're currently offering on a cash basis uh, will be reimbursed uh, and available through integrated healthcare systems uh, and so forth. So I think that's been a big challenge uh, trying to work with again, the current framework of the healthcare system. Uh, but we're hoping as this gets more and more publicity, as AI-driven diagnostics uh, become sort of more palatable, uh, that it'll be easier to integrate with already existing infrastructure. I think we're well on our way. David, there's so much that your company has to offer, but is there anything else you'd like to highlight today? Uh, you know, I think one of the things that I'm most proud of is that uh, as a physician, uh, you know, I'm able to meet with many of the clients that come through. Uh, and we've had so many success stories, uh, identifying new cancer, identifying new aneurysms at their earliest stages, essentially enabling our clients to uh, be evaluated for pre-symptomatic diagnosis. But I'm grateful to say that most of our clients, thankfully, don't have a new aneurysm or a new tumor or a new mutation, but all of our clients are benefiting from this AI-driven health intelligence. Uh, and so every client who leaves has a readout on their risk for coronary artery disease, diabetes, uh, dementia, based on everything that we know about them. Uh, and you know, many of our clients are grateful uh, for that intel. Uh, and one of the uh, compliments, probably the best compliment that can be paid really to what we do is that our clients are leaving and saying, hey, this has become a part of my program. Uh, and so we're really enthusiastic about the idea that with the right health intelligence, consumers, patients can make uh, detailed uh, decisions about their health, not necessarily even in consultation with doctors, uh, that allow them to really proceed in a programmatic way, not necessarily turning as a first resort to pills or pharmacotherapy, but using the data that we're giving them to uh, make lifestyle, diet changes, other changes that allow them to really be on sort of a program, not a pill. Well, I certainly did myself after I went to Health Nucleus. Great. Well, it was a real pleasure, David. Thank you for Thank joining you. us. Great.